Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I recently discovered this cool little device and I wanted to share it with you. You'll also be pleased to know that this is designed and built in the UK by Radio Amateur G1 LRO. Now availability is worldwide and shipping is from the United States and from the UK so you shouldn't have any problems wherever you are in the world. So what is it? Well, it's called the Universal Radio Controller. And it's a versatile multi-port radio controller that sits between your computer and a transceiver. There's also an inbuilt sound card with full PTT control, either using the serial port or the CM108 sound card standard. CAT control is supported for those transceivers that support CAT, which provides real-time management of band, frequency and PTT. There's also a dedicated serial connection for use with handheld radios, and this lets you program your handheld radio using a popular programming software called Chirp, which incidentally is multi-platform. As the Universal Radio Controller has a built-in sound card, you can easily use the Quangsheng Dock application that I showed you guys in a few videos back. Now, Quangsheng Dock allows you to remotely control one of the Quangsheng UK5 or 6 radios when using one of the custom firmwares, but in order to use the audio in and out from your computer, you had to build a special cable. Well, with the URC, you can control the Quangsheng and use the audio from your computer. Now, I'll show you this working shortly. There are a couple of optional boards you can order for the URC, one of which is a packet radio TNC board, and this adds APRS DigiPeter functionality along with a KISS modem feature. Now to help visualize the available ports on the URC, this diagram does a pretty good job. You'll be pleased to know that the single USB socket is USB-C, which in my personal opinion is way more reliable than those older micro sockets. Now all of the radio connecting sockets are 3.5 mil sockets, apart from the two OHIS sockets, which are in the form of RJ45. Now the OHIS or Open Headset Interconnect Standard sockets are used for the emerging standard for connecting equipment and headsets to transceivers. G1 LRO has a blog post all about OHIS on his website, which I'll link below if you'd like to know more about this. So most people order the APRS and KISS modem personality board when ordering their URC, and so did I. Now it comes as a little kit and it's based on the VP DigiBlue Pill module. As well as a PCB, you also get a new end plate, which caters for those extra switches and LED indicators for like DCD and PTT when that modem feature is active. Now you do have to solder in some headers for the Blue Pill module onto the modem board, and then you have to solder the Blue Pill module onto those headers. You also need to solder another header which is used to connect the modem board to the main board below, but it's fairly easy to do, maybe a little time consuming as there's lots of pins, but it gives you that sense of DIY. You also get a little monitor speaker which sticks onto that new faceplate, and you also need to solder the wires for this speaker onto the board. The speaker allows you to monitor the received audio just with a push of a button. If we take just a moment to look at the main board, we can see it's designed and manufactured to quite a good standard. You'll also notice some jumpers on the main board. Now, most likely you will not need to change any of these, but they can be used to change things like voltage level of the serial port. You can, of course, consult the website for more information on what all of these different jumpers do. Attaching the modem board is just the case of pushing the newly soldered header into the socket on that main board like this. Once in place, just attach the two lower screws to hold the board and faceplate in place. However, don't put the lid on just yet as I'll need to check the audio levels for transmit and receive of the modem. Now these can be adjusted using the two board mounted variable pots as shown here. So let's connect up a radio and in this example, I'll just use a Quangsheng handheld, which incidentally is running some custom firmware for the later example I'll show you. But for this demonstration, it doesn't really matter what firmware you have. In fact, it doesn't really matter what radio you have, it will still work the same, assuming you have the right cables. 
With a radio connected to the URC like this, we then need to plug the URC into the computer and then an antenna on the radio. Now I'll just use my outside tri-band antenna for this example. On the URC, we need to switch the serial port function switch to TNC and then the APRS stroke TNC switch, we need to set that to the far right option to on. Using PuTTY, I now need to connect to the URC over serial so that I can configure a couple of items. You can get the URC's COM port via your device manager. Once connected, type config and then press enter and this will be shown within the PuTTY window. Type monitor and then press enter to enter monitor mode. Now if you type cal space high, your radio should start to transmit a tone. And using another radio close by to listen on the same frequency, you can now adjust the TX pot on the URC so that your transmit audio is at a good level. Simply type cow stop to stop the URC from transmitting. Now the modem is pre-programmed to process APRS data packets. So tune your radio to your location's APRS frequency. Here in the UK, it's 144.800 megahertz. Now hopefully you'll start to see decoded frames appear on the PuTTY terminal window. Now watch out for any messages that relate to the incoming audio level or signal level. The signal level for each packet should be between 30 to 50%. If you need to adjust it, you have two options. You can either turn the volume up or down on the radio or adjust the RX verbal adjuster on that TNC board. Now, once you get each level between 30 to 50%, then the decoded packet should be quite reliable. You can now go ahead and set other settings like your call sign, for example. Now to see a list of the current parameters, simply type print and then press enter. Now, one important setting apart from your call sign is the non-APRS setting. You need to type non-APRS space on and press enter. Then type save and press enter to save those settings and it reboots the URC. The non-APRS setting tells the VP Digiboard to decode any packet frames that are not just only APRS packets as that's how it's shipped. Now the reason for this is that I'm going to try and connect to a local packet node which is around 20 miles north of me. With the radio set to the right frequency of the node, and with an application called QT Turn TCP, I can now control the TNC within the URC. As you can see here, I'm connecting to GB7MNK. Now this is what the radio and the URC sounds like when it's in use. Earlier in the video, I mentioned how the URC can be used with the Quangsheng radios that are running the custom firmware along with the Quangsheng dock application. Now, as the URC supports both data and audio, you're able to use the computer's speakers and microphone to talk through the K5 or K6 radios when plugged into the URC along with the data and PTT control. Within the dock application, you just need to set the COM port of the URC and then the mic and speakers for your computer. You then need to set the audio to radio device and the audio from radio device, which are the sound card options from the universal radio controller. You also need to set the serial port function switch to HT on the URC and also just make sure the TNC is turned off if you have it installed. You'll now be able to hear the radio's audio output through your computer speakers and if you press the PTT button on the dock software then your microphone audio will be transmitted through the radio. Of course you can now also see the spectrum analyzer and control the radio's features, functions and frequency all from the dock software. Now these are just a couple of examples of what you can do with a universal radio controller. Earlier on I mentioned you can also use it as a computer interface to program your radio using the popular Chirp software. Now, if you guys have got one of these, let me know which radio you use it with and what do you use it for. 
There are some other interesting options available, and in fact, in the near future, you'll be able to buy one of these universal radio controllers with an inbuilt transceiver. So you wouldn't even need to connect it to a radio. Anyway, guys, there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope that it's something new that you haven't seen before. Until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.